All right, I got a riddle for you. Which letter is silent in the word sent? S-C-E-N-T. Is the S silent or is the C silent? Sent. Who knows? Hey, now we got a scent going on here. This would actually be a stink. Lipping lizards. Let you. More than a scent. And that would be with the CRA in Canada. This is a Canadian talk, but no matter where you live in the world, you might find this interesting because I think it's happening in your country too. Canadians, politicians, wow, let's have a yikes and a yeek because here it comes, it's coming at you. The Canadian Revenue Agency now is saying, we're not going to investigate all this new evidence that we recently found because somebody did a leak online about offshore accounts. And we found that there is more than 3,000 wealthy Canadians that have money offshore, but we're going to leave them alone. It's mostly legal anyway. Among the top names, though, that do pop up are some ex-prime ministers, Former Prime Ministers Picky Verbiage, Brian Mulroney, Paul Martin, and John Krishan. And they keep digging, they might even find more names, but, but they're going to leave that alone. I find that interesting how you have former Prime Ministers that have to go somewhere else and put their money because the laws that they created or crafted in their own place are not good enough for them. I, really, I mean, these are the same guys also that go to America for fixing when it comes to health care, right? And, and, and so maybe fix it at your own place. But they don't do that. I mean, there's a real message there, and you find that in country after country after country, but particularly now for this topic is Canada. Wow, I mean, how can a leader of a country create a tax mess in his own country that is so bad that you have to go to another country? So it's got nothing to do with the citizenry. This is all about me. This is wrong. This is just morally corrupt. And these guys have so much money to put in other places that they've taken wrongfully from the Canadian citizenry. Paul Martin, he's worth billions of dollars, billions. The Canadian government, which is the people of Canada, gave him a couple of million dollars, I think every day. He got over a quarter of a billion dollars as a grant to go out and buy some steamships. He owns one of the largest steamship countries, or companies rather, in the whole world. He took the quarter of a billion dollars, bought some more ships, and then he incorporated the company in the Caribbean. And he's never paid any tax to Canada. This is a former prime minister, liberal, of course he's a liberal. And, and, and Brian Mulroney was actually a conservative in terms of his voting or the party that he was with. But he, if he was a conservative, I mean, I'll bark like a fox because he ain't. I, he's away over there on the left and they're all the same. They're all lawyers. And, and, and they don't care about the peons, about the peasants. I mean, it's a bad, bad thing. I mean, holy. And, and then we swing over to modern governments. Conservative Stephen Harper. He was a conservative for a long time in power. And, and he had a majority. Wow, did he ever fail us? I mean, he had an opportunity to go back. Banana republics go back and take money back from the people who stole it from the citizens, right? And these guys just kind of pat him on the head and said, do you want some more? I mean, now you have a government of power presently in Canada. They're even going to make these guys look like paupers. I mean, it goes on and on. And there ain't nobody with the courage to go back in time and, and arrest these scamps and, and get the money back and give it back to the Canadian citizen. Uh, and all they do is talk about health care and a gay pr pride parades and nonsense stuff. Let's talk about uh, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. This is just hilarious. I mean, I've reported on this before, but I want to do it again because it's kind of current in my brain, at least. It was called the Airbus Affair. And, and back in 1988, uh, Mr. Mulroney was the Prime Minister of the country, and he had a relationship with a German uh, gun person. He was a lobbyist, uh, arms lobbyist. His name was Carl Schreiber. Interesting enough, I met Carl Schreiber in Edmonton, Alberta in probably 1985 or 86. And, you know, he was an interesting kind of guy. <laughs> but I had no idea that he would go on to do this kind of stuff. In any event, uh, the uh, purchase agreement was done to buy $1.8 billion worth of airplanes from Airbus. And the Prime Minister, of course, is the one that spearheaded all this. The RCMP in Canada investigated and they found out there was a whole bunch of wrongdoing. And Mulroney actually accepted, or so they found, at least only three bags of cash, a quarter of a million dollars in cash, three different times. I think it was in a 7-Eleven or a McDonald's store or something. Schreiber came in and said, here's your money. And, and it was clearly a kickback scheme, right? I mean, there's no question about that. Now let's back up a little bit. Prime Minister Mulroney, he's the one right-wing guy, right, again, where's the fox, but, but, but uh, he brought in GST, goods and services tax. So when he was 
found out, when they discovered that he had taken this cash, it was several years after he brought in the GST, you know what he did? He went and he paid the GST on it. Really? Is that kind of your first clue? Well, he should be so far in jail, you've got to feed him with a slingshot, okay? And, and then he sued the federal government in Canada for, <laughs> he sued them for libel. And he said, how dare you call me names? But, but you are a bad guy. You took the cash in the bag and you've already admitted it now under oath in court and everything else. B -b but what? Oh, no, no, you're calling me names and how dare you? So he won. He actually was successful in court. The Canadian government wrote him a check for $2.1 million. Of course, if he did it today, he'd probably, you know, get $100 million because they now give $10 million out. If you just say you're a former terrorist, you get a big check. The Canadian thing has just totally gone to crap. Blah. But in any event, he got his check for $2.1 million. Here comes the real funny thing, though. <laughs> Then the court ordered him to pay, <laughs> or ordered him to pay, four hundred and seventy thousand dollars to Schreiber, <laughs> because the lawsuit claimed that the former prime minister didn't provide services for the cash payments he got in the bag. <laughs> Your bribery didn't complete because <laughs> the because the police stopped the whole mess, right? <laughs> And then the judge, it was Justice uh, Oliphant, if I'm saying that correctly, he called the dealings between Schreiber and Mulroney as inappropriate. <laughs> ah, there are no words. And then this is a country where you're talking about the asylum uh, or the, the inmates running the asylum. I tell you, it is just craziness. And if we could ever have a government in Canada, somebody run on the basis of, hey, I'm going to go after all of the scams, scounders, thieves, and crooks. Not out there. Not the guys that we're talking about having gun control with, but the guys in here that have pens. Not guns, pens. And Armani suits, and their lawyers mostly, and their thieves, crooks, and scoundrels. Those would be the guys that have been leading Canada for a long time, and I think some of them are still there in the big chair. Hey, y'all, come back here tomorrow. We're going to have more for you from the right. And, and, but this is all talk. Could somebody please do something about this? I, I remember when men were men and women are glad they were. Where's a man? I'm too old to be one. I could still be a man. I'm not too old for that. But I'm too old to go and make this happen. You need a politician to stand up. Stephen Harper had that opportunity and he blew it. And so we need somebody else. Y'all know somebody? Call them. Tell them to come and fix this mess. Hey, see ya.